All righty, everybody. Welcome to episode five of Dealbox Daily. I'm Jonathan Alvarado, your host for today. And joined with me is my co-host, Brendan McShane. Say hello, Brendan. How's it going? Our featured guest, Taylor Wallace, Chief of Staff from Total Network Services. How are you, Taylor? What's going on, guys? Dealbox Daily is your daily blockchain and crypto news. We cover all things digital assets, DeFi, STOs, NFTs, fintech, blockchain, of course, for entrepreneurs, best practices in all things private placements, investors, best practices in all things alternative investments. We go through category design principles to help you succeed in your respective markets and industries. We're a daily live stream podcast. We blog every day. Links are provided in the comments below. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to my co-host, Brendan McShane, for a quick crypto update. Thank you for that, John. And we're going to go on to uh, thomascarter.io to see today's crypto update. The market cap is at 1.48 trillion, a 4% decrease over the last day. Bitcoin is slightly down at 37,000. Ethereum also down 5% at 2,200. And the one to really watch is going to be Tether in the future based on their regulation problems that they're having right now and the scrutiny that they're getting. Uh, Then jumping into the first article, Shopify is starting to allow its e-commerce customers to sell NFTs directly. Shopify's president said Monday that the e-commerce company is directly supporting the sale of non-fungible tokens, NFTs, for its merchants through the offering scope appears limited at this time. I think this is going to more open up NFTs into the average day consumer's life. Um, Unless you're a crypto head, you're not going around on e-commerce sites and seeing NFTs every single day. The average person is not, barely even knows what this is. So it'll be interesting if they go on smaller Uh, e-commerce sites and then see an NFT come up. Not sure how popular or much of this will take off, but I think it will educate the basic shopper and them seeing it come up more often in their lives will draw more interest in the future. What do you think about this, Taylor? Yeah, I think this is a somewhat, if you can't beat them, join them type situation. I think at a certain point, Shopify was waiting around. They're like, all right, this space is making so much money. We have to jump in at some point. Usually you'll see a a giant like Shopify, I feel like jump in once things have settled down, but I think there's still a lot of fat to be cut off of this, Uh, not not completely meat yet still in the NFT space. We have a long way to go. I think uh, I was talking to a friend about it in the evolution of uh, how we consume sound. We're at like cassette tapes still, and we haven't even moved on to, you know, CDs, let alone MP3. So I think we still have a long way to go. Um, I'm still have a pretty strong belief that the art space and the music space will continue to do well here. Um, I think NFTs will be best used for verification and certification of ownership of real world assets and then of actual digital um, assets, the memorabilia space and other spaces are yet to be proved. But um, yeah, I think I think ultimately this is going to serve Shopify really well. But I think we still have a long way to go to figure out, you know, what uh, in the NFT and NFT space is going to win. Yeah. And then next one, we have a follow up from episode one. Brazilian Burger King customers can now purchase meat-flavored biscuits with Dogecoin. And there we have it, following in the footsteps of Act. <laughs> According to regional reports, the Burger King franchise in Brazil has introduced a new type of food specifically made for canines called the Doge Pupper. The new product is a, Doge, is a dog biscuit <laughs> that canine owners... Hang on, hang on. Doge Pupper? I believe that's how you would pronounce it. Doge P-P-R? Pupper? Doge PPR is not how you'd say it. I agree with you. It's Doge Pupper. Yeah. It's sick puppers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they're letting you use your Dogecoin to buy dog biscuits. Um, you're going to send your currency over to Burger King's wallet in Brazil. And then you receive your treat through a food delivery service. And we can see here that uh, Axe kind of picked up on what Burger oh, King. Oh, yes. <laughs> no <laughs> they way. Both, uh, you know, a little bit of interaction there. They, they saw the wave. And as we said last time, Brands are going to keep jumping on this. I think we're going to keep seeing them do this in the future. Yeah, I I completely agree. It's going to keep happening until this well is dry. I I mean, obviously Burger King and Axe, I mean, there's some commonalities there. Both of them were really cool when I was in elementary school and uh, not so much anymore. So I think, I mean, it's, they're definitely not the the leaders in this space, but the people who are trying to make some noise because they know that there's a a doge army out there. I, I think it's fun. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, who doesn't like that? So, <laughs> just some uplifting news for the day. Hashtag Doge Pupper. That's all I have to say about that one. <laughs> <laughs> all 
All right, it's a bit of a sci-fi here. Blockchain fail safes in space, space chain, blockstream, and crypto stat. As cryptocurrency markets continue its overall moonward trajectory, the stakes are getting higher for blockchain protocols. Blockchains must not only maintain their security in the technical sense, but need to be able to withstand regulatory setbacks as well. If governments are potential threat to the visions of, of unstoppable decentralized networks on Earth, then putting blockchain validator nodes in space is a backup. So these firms are putting their blockchains in space and using them as nodes for validation. So in case the internet ever goes down, there is always a backup system and it is a fail safe. And they're using it as a way of saying even more scrutiny coming into the immutability of blockchain and censorship restraints in this technology, even more so probably for third world countries that can um, put restrictions on their internet access. Yeah. So if anybody has embarrassing pictures on the web that they one day hope will be gone for ever <laughs> this basically guarantees that those things are never going away oh my gosh i mean i i i feel like there's a pretty comedic component to this like hey blockchain is the safest you know the best way we can uh that we know how to increase security in all these markets but what you know would make it even more safer if we sent it to space no one can meddle with it it's as if really yeah i love it it's really decentralized network I mean, we're living in the future. I mean, Garzik, the co-founder and chief technology officer of Space Chain. I mean, um, placing nodes outside of reach is going to help security and vulnerability issues. I mean, sounds great to me. Uh, that's over my head, but um, I'm about it. Yeah, they launched a rocket with uh, NASA already and SpaceX this year. So they're already going after it and they got satellites up there now. Yet another space for us all to do, all us crypto heads to do research into. I haven't, I haven't learned about, uh, yeah, space and, and blockchain yet, so... Yeah, Lovely. <laughs> well, guys, quick commercial. One of Dealbox's premier client companies is putting together an event, a nonprofit event with Make Crypto Easy this Saturday that's focused on sponsoring and promoting the user friendly widespread adoption of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. Give it a look. It's on Eventbrite. Simply Google Mega Park Experience or search on Eventbrite Mega Park Experience happening this Saturday. We'll see you guys there and turning it back to you, Brennan. Thank you for that, John. And to the next one, bit of a foreign market. Um, Africa's leading blockchain infrastructure seeks to spearhead the tokenization of the rich natural resources on the continent. Um, down here, Africa and in fact, other emerging economies because of the peculiar economic situations, youthful population and an affinity for adopting new technologies find themselves at a vantage point to repurpose emerging technologies to more specific and relatable use, especially in solving for socioeconomic challenges. I think that this is going to be an interesting space to follow because Africa is one of the last places that has untapped potential into their natural resources. America and China are starting to make their way into that continent yep. to try and take anything they possibly can by, by investing into their local economies. But this is a way for Africa to kind of pivot themselves and take it back and be able to share their wealth with the world, but be paid for it at the same time. So I'm not sure exactly how this will play out now, but in the future, this is an interesting aspect for how Africa's development will play out. Yeah, it says, unlike many other platforms that tend to benefit early adopters, often those with a lot of money and mining rigs, Bantu Blockchain uses a fair economic incentive model to reward all participants of the network according to their contributions, regardless of what time they join the blockchain network. I, I, I think that the big winners in blockchain application spaces are going to find their their kind of early adopters in, in third world. We've, we've seen article after article of uh, people in uh, parts of the world where their governments are unfortunately corrupt um, and they can rig the game for who is the highest bidder and their money isn't stable, their dollars are inflated, their currency is inflated. I think that Bitcoin applications uh, or cryptocurrency applications and uh, technologies like Bitcoin will continue to be the most effective in the third world because what blockchain has to offer the world um, is decentralization and the world right now uh, in or in these third world countries, they're most corrupted by centralization of power. So um, it's only obvious that you put a decentralized technology in a heavily centralized area, you're going to see some significant changes. So this is exciting. Yeah, to spin right off that back into the third world and emerging economies in general, um, India is to use Ethereum blockchain to verify diploma certificates. Yeah. The government recently announced a partnership with India blockchain startup Legit Doc to implement a credentializing system powered by Ethereum to provide tamper-proof diploma certificates. India in the past has been almost anti-crypto, so this is a more of a push for a country that has a billion people to get more into the space. 
but it also has a problem with a lot of fraud. And I can see this being definitely used, but also built upon for other verification of identity and documents in that country. I know that another one that they're going after is housing. Um, People have been known to be screwed over through their wills and the government will step in and repossess their homes. But if they put it onto a blockchain, it can prove ownership. It makes it much more difficult for any corruption purposes to occur. And as reiterating what you said, Taylor, um, the decentralization factor of this is especially beneficial to these third world countries that are known for having corruption and distrust with their local authorities and institutions. Yeah, I think I mean, this is the most exciting thing that we've gone over in you know a few episodes for sure. I think this is amazing. And it's exactly what Ethereum is meant to be used for. So yeah, this is this is so cool. I can't wait until other countries do the same thing. Um, yeah, I, I, I especially what you said, I know India has not been bullish on cryptocurrencies and then for that country to then uh, want to do this partnership with legit doc to implement this credentialing system. I think it's um, it nothing could be more exciting for me because it's really showing the true p- power of blockchain technology. And uh, this is just going to happen in more and more places. Yeah, there you have it. Wonderful. Well, folks, that brings us to the end of our episode today. I want to invite everyone to check out our sponsor's website, Make Crypto Easy. That's makecryptoeasy.io. They're doing some great things in the Southern California area. If you find yourself in San Diego, LA, Irvine, anywhere down there this weekend, make your way out to Vista, California. There's information on the website and their social links, which we'll provide in the comments below. I'm Jonathan Alvarado, joined by my co-host, Brendan Taylor Wallace. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thanks, Sean. See ya.